Inflation is, is in the headlines every day, and the Federal Reserve's response or potential response to inflation is in the headlines every day. I think that that is what has people nervous. Um, because if inflation persists, then the Fed has promised, it's, it's, it's mandated to do something about it, meaning raise interest rates, tighten financial conditions. And the perception is that the Fed's loose financial conditions or what they have allowed over the last couple of years since the start of the pandemic is mostly responsible for the bull market we've been in since um, early 2020. And I, I think a lot of this is perception because people have a hard time pointing to exactly what's causing this, what's causing that, even when it comes to inflation. Um, because people are saying that inflation is um, it's due to these loose financial conditions. Uh, the combination of that and um, the, the fiscal policy, meaning the government uh, handing out money and um, being generous with uh, stimulus. And they're sort of neglecting the, the rest of the contributing factors, which is every, the damage that's been done to the supply chain, not just due to COVID, but also before that with the trade war we had with China that we still have, really. I mean, the tariffs are still on. So the supply chain has been disrupted materially, and it was made worse uh, in 2020 and 2021 by the effects that um, COVID had on all these various countries where we get goods made and shipped and um, shutdowns and people actually getting sick and not being able to work. All that contributes to our inability to get goods made, delivered, shipped, all of that. So um, uh, to me, it's still a huge unknown. Uh, but leading into this Fed meeting, which just happened today or is in the middle of happening, um, people are nervous that the Fed is going to do something to dramatically tighten or over tighten financial conditions and it's going to result in the market selling off in, in a big way. Um, but the market has already sold off in anticipation of this perceived tightening. I mean, the, the Fed itself has not really made any big statements or and certainly not made any big moves. Um, you know, they've reduced the purchases of bond buying that they're doing, uh, but they're still easing. It, it, they are still actively purchasing bonds in the open market, uh, treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. So, uh, so what about inversely? Uh, is the market selling off because the Fed is not being more aggressive sooner to combat inflation? That's an interesting question. You know, is is the market selling off because the Fed is uh, behind the curve, so to speak, and they are they're too loose? Um, perhaps I, I, you know, I, I guess you could you could sort of back into the argument that because they've been too loose, they're going to end up having to overcorrect. They're going to have to overcompensate for this mistake, this supposed mistake that they've made. Um, you know, again, I think this was either one or two videos ago where we addressed the, the, the Federal Reserve making mistakes. And I think it's kind of hard to argue that they have made mistakes or, or, or if they have, have they not corrected them quickly and, um, and in the, you know, the most proper way. They're going to probably say today that they can't really pinpoint the fact that their policies have been the primary contributing factor to inflation, and therefore they can't fix it themselves. So, you know, I think that's it's a good question, and, and I really just think we need to be patient and figure out, um, you know, what can be done about it, if anything. Maybe it just needs to naturally correct itself, and the Fed is going to end up doing less than people fear. I think there's there's probably some truth to that. I think that it's sort of like, um, you know, certain assets tend to react more quickly, and they they, they call them leading leading indicators. Um, and, and it does feel like the the speculative bubble bursting has sort of leaked into some other more traditional asset classes, crypto, uh, the meme stocks like you referenced, the Kathy Wood stuff, the the Ark Innovation ETF, which has gotten more than cut in half. I think a lot of this stuff has already reacted to uh, 
the tightening of financial conditions that's, that has been feared. You know, the conditions have not really tightened, but like you said, th the market has already kind of done the Fed's work. You know, I know that, that people are, are starting to suggest that, um, that conditions have tightened because asset prices have already deflated. Um, you know, I mean, we haven't had a major correction, although it certainly feels like it in, in certain high growth areas and, and technology, but the broader market, the Dow and the S&P, for instance, sort of the more traditional assets, um, you know, it's sort of run of the mill correction. It doesn't feel like it because, uh, you know, some of these things became so popular over the last two years and a lot of young people are involved in some of these more speculative things and they've just gotten crushed. So as you know, and as uh, our, our clients know, we've had sort of a barbell approach the last couple of years. We've, we've certainly had exposure to growth, which benefited us the last couple of years, and it's hurt us the last month or two. But we've also had exposure to value. We've had exposure to sort of the old economy, energy, banks, industrials. These things have held up very well. Um, really only energy of those, of the value space has has rallied dramatically. I mean, that's in the headlines, how well um, oil and gas and that sort of stuff has done. Uh, the other portions of value uh, have done okay. They've, they've held up. I wouldn't say that they're in some sort of a bull market, but they have definitely all done better than than high growth. I think with the if you just leave out energy, I, I think this this dramatic outperformance of value over growth really comes more from growth collapsing than value doing phenomenally well. I, I think, you know, banks and industrials are still trading cheap uh, to their historical multiples and also uh, below their, their all-time highs. So I, I don't know if value is, you know, some sort of a new place for growth investors to go to get growth. I just think that there's we're being reminded that there's a place for it in portfolios. It's it's a, a terrific question, and it, I don't feel like it's being asked too much. Um, the The answer is yes. A lot of things are getting better, rolling over, as you put it, and and it's sort of happening just as the Fed is capitulating on inflation. You know, it wasn't today's meeting, but the last meeting. Uh, Jay Powell finally kind of said, okay, we were wrong to use the term transitory. Inflation may be here to stay or it's gonna remain elevated longer than we expected. And since then, almost on a dime, we've seen some of the, the, the lockups at the, um, at the ports. You know, that sort of eased. Pricing for inputs has started to come down. The price, you know, price of lump. Shipping container rates and lumber and all of these these things that contribute to um, you know higher prices in the short term have started to roll over and we'll show a graphic hopefully that illustrates that home prices have not been accelerating anymore they're still rising or at least not falling but um, but the rate of change most certainly has come in and I think that is really an important thing for for people to start focusing on. Totally, and it can get a little bit frustrating because it feels like we have this conversation over and over and over again. I mean, I get why it's hard to understand, but when the Fed says that they're raising interest rates, they're raising the federal funds rate, which is the overnight rate that banks charge each other to lend money back and forth. And that is, it has something to do, it's related to the long end of the curve, meaning 10 or 30 year treasury bonds, but they're not directly connected. So theoretically, the Fed could raise the Fed funds rate, the overnight rate, and long-term interest rates could go down. That has happened before, and the opposite has happened too. Really what um, the long end of the curve responds to is, like you said, supply and demand for US treasury bonds and expectations for growth of our economy, which is kind of like those two things are, are related. Um, but then there is this third factor, which is the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, because they do hold longer-term Treasury bonds on their balance sheet. So if they, th this no discussion of this whatsoever, but if they were to start selling Treasury bonds 
onto the open market, that could have upward pressure on interest rates. There's no discussion of them doing that. So um, the rates that people think about, the mortgage rates, the credit card rates, these things are, are, are largely unaffected by the Federal Reserve moving the overnight rate from basically zero to 25 or even 50 basis points. So yeah, it, it, it is interesting. It's something where like it's in the headlines all the time and people are assuming that they're going to be impacted and then the dust kind of settles and it's like, oh, mortgage rates didn't move or they moved up less than I expected or they moved down, you know, that's, that's a possibility. Um, so these kind of things kind of have a way of trickling through the system as people adjust to what it actually means. Yeah, it's a it's a great time. You know, sometimes these videos are timely. When it, uh, we've had a couple um, recordings where things have arguably been great or perfect, and you know, there's not too much fear in the headlines. So this is our, our the first one in a little while where there actually has been a lot of fear in the headlines, and um, you know, we've seen this the, the collapse in in um, in speculative asset classes, and people are actually in in some pain. So the traders. Um, people who are, the people who a year ago thought that it was reasonable to double their money um, over the next, you know, week or two. Those people are in a lot of pain. So um, I understand that expectations are for the Fed to hike rates in March and then um, potentially two more times th uh, throughout the rest of the year. And, and I think that's probably reasonable, but what was reinforced today by, by Chairman Powell is that they're going to they're going to wait and see. They're not. They're not on this sort of predetermined path where we're going to hike three times this year, no matter what. They're going to hi try hike once and see what happens. And if the market, um, if if inflation and and the market look like they can handle it and need it, then they're going to continue. So I just I sort of like this tone. I like this whole you know wait and see approach. Um, they're not. There's no knee jerk reactions to what's going on. What I think, as far as what could go right, I think the best thing that's happened over the last month or two is this major, major reset in sentiment. So, you know, the, the expectations for Fed hikes is really geared towards inflation. You know, if inflation's, you know, overheating, you know, we're, and I know that the last read was crazy, it was like 7% annualized, but that's not a full year's reading. And obviously there's, it's a year over year reading. So we're basing things on, on what happened a year before. So I think the best possible thing is that sentiment has gone from wildly bullish, if not a, you know, a speculative frenzy, to kind of the opposite. You know, people are, are really shying away from these speculative assets and they're, they're scared. They're scared that they're gonna lose all their money. And that's just such a huge shift versus six months ago. So what could go right? I think sentiment has been appropriately reset where expectations are now low for forward returns from any asset class. So the market, you know, to sort of revisit some of our uh, questions from earlier in the video, the market has sort of done the Fed's work for it where people are now scared and uh, expectations have been lowered regardless of what the Fed actually does or says or doesn't say. So that's a, a big part of what could go right, I think, is the, is the reset in sentiment going forward. And um, you know, this, this really negative start to the year, which uh, you know, I don't know that it necessarily needs to spook investors for the, for the rest of 2022. Um, you know, we may actually have the ingredients for um, a, a recovery to, to this growth scare.